Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Trimco number 1069L in a 619 finish. That's what you see um, of the door in elevation. If you open the door up all the way and slid it into the pocket, that's what you would see. There's a backside view, which you would never see once it's installed. So the Trimco 1069L is, to date, the only ADA compliant sliding or pocket door privacy latch. It is um, very perfectly suited for applications where you have um, assisted living um, situations where you will have a f facilities where handicapped people um, reside. And the operation of this privacy allows an ADA compliant sort of operation where you're not twisting anything and you can just push the handle up or down to latch or unlatch it. Okay? And we'll go over that in a moment. The 1069 first is available, this 1069 uh, is available as a passage set. When you add the L, it means privacy. Let's just say that it means latching uh, or locking. Uh, there's no keys involved, but it does give privacy in the sense that you can't walk up to the door and pull it open because it's latched. Available in several different architectural finishes. This is the 619, which is satin nickel, which is a relatively uncommon finish for this item, uh, but nonetheless is something that is certainly manufactured and available. Very nice, attractive finish from Trimco. You see a little bit of grease on the backside, and that's normal uh, because this mechanism tips in and out, and I'll go over that in a moment. Okay, so for pocket doors, sliding doors, privacy sort of feature. First of all, I want to I want to say that this is not a privacy set in the sense that it's incorrect to use the word privacy. It's it is correct to say latching. So this will keep the door in a latched position but doesn't provide privacy because when it is latched, you can come up to the handle and push it up and pull the door open which suits very well for instances where there are uh, you know, healthcare professionals on staff uh, and they need to have no restriction in terms of getting in to the bathroom. So this is, you've got your passage version, your 1069, then your 1069L for latching. It latches, but doesn't keep someone out um, unintentionally. Um, but the design of this is, is more like I said, it's, it's, it's intended that healthcare professionals can get in. Items like this are really not used in uh, uh, situations that do not require complete adherence to ADA standards. Um, you don't generally see these in homes unless it's been requested by someone who is, is physically handicapped and, and cannot turn or rotate their wrist at all, and the operation is just push up or push down. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the general operation of this item. Then I'm going to talk. Uh, then I'm going to move on and talk specifically about the installation of the item. So the general operation of this item is this: when this portion back here, and if you're just in general interested in this product, stay with us for this part. Uh, the operation is the business end of this. The the mechanism back here, the plate, all the way down would be mortised to the door. Okay. So all of this is mortised. This portion is flush with the edge of the door, okay? The plate portion would be flush as, because this is all mortised in. You install it with the four screws. You insert a set screw that you're going to get, black screw that, that's right at the bottom of my fingertip with the red thread lock material on it with this Allen wrench into one of these two holes here. You, you turn it in so that it's flush. 
the instructions, uh, in, by the way, there's a link below this video to the cut sheet and then another to the flyer, uh, Trimco's one page um, introductory uh, piece of uh, information about it. The link to the cut sheet states that in step three of the installation instructions, install the handing screw in the lower hole, pardon me, install handing screw in the appropriate holes as shown on the drawing below. If clockwise rotation is desired, install, install the set screw in the lower hole. If counterclockwise operation is desired, install it in the top hole. Okay, so what you can see back here, those two holes, they're oval or elongated. The operation of this item, the mechanism is attached firmly to the edge of the door. It's screwed down and, do, and it doesn't move. Then what happens is you either push this down, up, down or up, and that causes the mechanism to tip back and forward. Now I can do it in both directions now because I don't have a handing screw set in. But depending on your door, I'm trying to get that so you can see how the latch pops out. Depending on the door, what side you know uh, it slides into and then what side is the bathroom, you're either going to want this to tip up or down, or you might have a preference up or down. And you can define that because those screws in the back, you know, you're always going to come back to center in a proper installation. And you can see, depending on how it goes, why you would use one or the other, okay? So you install that screw and then you'll have an operation that doesn't go like this. It will only up and then down, okay, or up and then down. That's how the proper operation works and that is governed by that set screw that you install either here or here. Okay. When the mechanism tips back and when the, when the handle is lifted up or down, it forces the latch to project out Got it right in the center, and it's and it's flush, and that's would be the rested position. And as the handle is pushed down, that pops out the strike or the catch, the latch. Here's your strike that's mortised into the frame. Obviously, a cased opening frame, and it will come in and drop down. As you can see, latch comes out and then down. Okay, that's how the operation is. Uh, the other steps of the installation: step one, mortise the door. I'm going to talk about that next. Step two, insert the door pole and install the pole with the four screws. So once you're mortised, you're then going to pre-drill your holes and physically attach this to the door. The handing screw we talked about, install the strike in the frame, and then confirm that your installation is accurate. And that really represents all of the discussion regarding operation of this item. It's quite frankly that simple. The only thing that people have said, oh, but it doesn't provide true privacy. Uh, it doesn't. Um, and that I don't, I can't speak for Trimco because I don't know what the design intention was, um, but they this is a latching only. So we've got non-latching and then latching, ADA compliant. Okay, from this part of the video forward, I'm going to talk about specifically the machining of a wood door and frame for this hardware. Jump off if you're not interested. Okay, so the machining of, the, of a wood door for this is, I suppose, no, I suppose, I know that it could be intimidating. They've got two templates here. And the paperwork, or at least with this unit, you're going to get the instructions that we just talked about, we just covered. Okay. And you can see dimensionally everything important about the item. I'll go over it at the very end. On page two, you're going to have the mortise or the template requirements for an inch and three eighths door right above my thumb. Then on the back side of all of this, they've got the, which is the same drawing, 
uh, except that it, it is modified slightly if you've got an inch and three quarter door. Your dimensions will change a bit. Um, Yeah, the dimensions change if it's an inch and three eighths, or, or the requirements change. Um, the reason that they change is, you know, we'll just talk about inch and three quarter first, and I'll tell you how inch and three eighths is different. So, the link below this video again to the cut sheet. Uh, if you scroll all the way to the pa the third page or page three, uh, what you see there, a bunch of dimensions, and when I look at this, I see three different sets setups that I have to do I see two body preparations and then what is called a plate preparation what I would call a plate preparation what that means is you've got this two inch pardon me this one inch tall preparation here that goes all the way over to here it's one inch tall and it is inch and an eighth wide as you can see drawn here then you've got this rectangular preparation that's two inches tall and only inch uh, uh, pardon me 11 16 wide and both of those in terms of depth are indicated here that first one is 5 8 deep and the next one is inch and 7 8 deep then you have a plate preparation which is five inch tall and then inch and 3 8 wide so it's inch and three eighths wide, five inch tall. And, and just right now I'll say where it differs on the inch and three eighths door is when you make the preparation for that plate, and I'll show it to you on the hardware in a moment, you would go all the way through the face of the door. You would clear out the entire inch and three eighths width of the door, thickness of the door. Okay, so definitely have that uh, template open on a window or a tab or a screen while you're watching this because I, I can't hold up both. The five inch, let's talk about the plate first. You've got, forgive me, let's talk, I don't like to talk about the plate first, I like to do the plates last. The deepest stuff first, working out, is how I would go about machining the door. That one inch tall by inch and an eighth wide preparation fits right in here. And that's because as the mechanism tips back and forth, you're gonna have this aspect of the trim of the device of the mechanism that is going to protrude protrude on either side and it's this shoulder let's call it a shoulder that forces the latch to come out or come back in depending on if you're you know if you're doing this or this it's tapered so as the latch mechanism is brought back vertical by tipping this up. Inside of here, the back side of the latch, the vertical back side of the latch encounters the shoulder of this um, regulator. I'm not sure the proper term for it. And it forces it in. So you've got to prep for the fact that, that re those regulators are on both sides because it's a non-handed unit. And that preparation is one inch tall, inch and an eighth wide, five eighths deep with an eighth inch radius so that's a bit unusual but the truth of the matter is um, the first time I mortise for something I go by the template and then at, if I've got multiple units to do I might cheat or I might go a different way in terms of making it faster or when it really doesn't matter that kind of thing but the template calls out for an eighth inch radius so if it was me I would have a template attached to the edge of the door uh, there are manufacturers of tools that make them. Feel free to reach out to me if you want to discuss what I would use to do it. Clamp it down to the door. You'd have the proper opening inside of it. You'd have your plunge router. For this, and I would, I would definitely use a plunge router. I would like to use the lightest plunge router that I could as well. The plunge routers are typically very heavy, and when you're doing small mortising like this, it's kind of, it's more of a challenge to wield a heavier plunge router, higher horsepower, spinning faster, that kind of stuff. Eighth inch radius, that means you're going to have a quarter inch two flute carbide uh, router bit. And I would make my one inch high preparation, inch and an eighth wide. I would go down, make it five eighths deep, okay? Um, 
and that would be the first body. Then, or I, you know, I would probably do it in reverse. I would do the larger body, the one I'm going to discuss now. I'd probably do that one first. You've got the larger 2 inch tall by 11 sixteenths preparation for this mechanism back here to recess into the door, and that's inch and 7 eighths deep. So, template, again, eighth inch radius, they're calling out in eight places, and that would be the eight places, the four for the regulator preparation or shoulder preparation, and then four more, because you've got four corners in each rectangle, uh, for the body mechanism. So I would take my router and I'd route that out, I'd put it deeper, and I'd keep going until I got to inch and seven eighths. I'd have an eighth inch radius, so I'm done with that. I would reset my template to do the one inch by inch and an eighth wide, five eighths deep preparation, then that's looking good. Now, looking at this template, the information that it does not give me, unless I'm missing it, is where to start this body and this body preparation in relationship to the top of the cutout or the center line of the screws or any reference point. Um, nor does it tell me where it's at, where it is in relationship, where this is in relationship, the smaller prep to the larger prep. And at that point, because the template is not given in a, or, or noted in any scale, um, we would default to having a caliper and physically measuring the part. You know you've got four and a half inch center on the screws, and you know your five inch overall height, but it doesn't tell you where to start these preparations. So scaling the drawing is probably not a good idea or the best idea. If it was me, I would get a caliper and I would measure from the top of the plate down to the top of this, and I might pad that up a sixteenth of an inch. Okay. Because all of this is concealed, you, you can be a bit flexible in terms of specific dimensions, but I would pad it up or down. Uh, you, want a little, you want to be able to fit that in ever so slightly. Um, so that's a failure of the template, that's for sure. So I would caliper that to, fig, to give me a, you know, um, a caliper, you know, something a bit more scientific than this one would be preferred, uh, or even a rule. Okay very handy tools to have. So you'll need to determine where those go. Then you've got the five inch tall preparation that is inch and three eighths wide and that's called out on the top and that is going to be an easy preparation. Your template goes on. Uh, that is going to be on the right hand side shown as Five sixteenths deep. Okay. Now, the drawing shows the eighth inch dimension because in an inch and three quarter door, your inch and three eighths wide preparation for the plate doesn't go through the door completely, and the inch and three eighths template indeed shows it differently. It shows it five sixteenths deep all the way down. So your plate is going to be inch and three eighths wide, five inch tall, five sixteenths deep. Okay. And then at that point. The mechanism fits in, resulting in this being flush with the edge of the door. That's how that's going to work. Uh, and again, the only problem you'll have is locating these, this preparation and then this preparation because it, it's, it's, not at, it's not adequately referenced. There needs to be two additional dimensions on here as far as I'm concerned. Um, but it happens is the bottom line. Generally, you know, the fella who is drafting this technical drawing. Um, may, maybe he's never installed it or she's never installed it physically on a door um, and that could be why those dimensions are missing. But no big deal. It's not a problem. If you've got the ability to set up a router, you can sure figure out where to put those. That's for sure. And if you can't, feel free to call me. I'll be happy to help you. Um, once you've got all that routed, 
And again, the only difference with the inch and three eighths is how your your plate is going to be mortised all the way through the door. Because if it's an inch and three eighths door and your prep is inch and three eighths wide, you've got to clear all that out. After that, you know, you'll attach it to the door, pre-drill your holes, and you're going to get these four, you know, what are drywall screws. Okay. The two silver screws are going to be for the strike, and that's what we're going to talk about next. On the top of page two, talking about the strike now, uh, top of page two, you can see the preparations for the strike. That's going to be the, a similar sort of approach with your two different preparations uh, for the strike itself, but also the dust box that is included. You can see that your plate is eighth inch thick. It is one inch wide, two and three quarter tall, okay? Okay, and then the preparation for the dust box is not given either. They're only giving information for the plate. Um, that'll be, again, an instance where you will need to measure how much to account for <laughs> the, uh, the dust box. So you'll do the preparation for the dust box first. At height, you know, it's symmetrical, so you can just measure the overall height, pad it a little bit. You don't want to get to where the screws are going to fall into. And then the depth that will mount underneath the, uh, on the back side of the strike, you don't want to be able to look in the frame and see chiseled out or routed out wood. You want that dust box back there. Um, they do refer to the three quarter inch depth for the dust box. but not a height. You can interpret the width of it to be the same as the width of the strike at one inch, uh, but you're going to want to put a tape measure on that. Putting them next to each other, it does not appear to be identical. Oh, no, it, it does. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're flush with each other when I hold them back to back. And uh, forgive me for not removing these from the package. This is going directly to a client. I don't want to disturb its original condition any more than necessary. Um, but after you've got that mortised, um, test for operation. Attach the strike uh, and test for operation. Okay. Now, another omitted piece of information is the center line to attach both of these. The center line of this, you're going to want to make sure that you're within ADA compliance in terms of the height of where you're going to install that, okay? You know, uh, typical doors are basically from the floor to the center of a lock is about 40 inch. You know, that is generally in range of where you need to be. The problem that we have here, however, which is not, you know, th this is an omission that, that, you know, one or two omissions on a template, fine. You get into three, then it's a problem. You're going to have to physically determine where to attach this strike. You're going to have to put that on the, on the door, slide it over, and eyeball that so that you get an idea of where this falls, where the hook comes down, or the catch comes down, to give you the proper engagement with the strike. You know, so you're going to have to really go, go about determining that as best you can. Roughly looking at it here, you know, I would say that the inside top of this strike, the hole, the inside hole, needs to obviously allow this when it's in a opened position so that it, it will, when you rotate it to activate it, it instantly starts to come straight out. Okay, it instantly starts to come straight out and then drops down as you can see. So when it's in the when it when the door is in the open position, you're gonna need to make sure that 
it can come and come straight out inside of here and then it drops down. So that would probably be where I try to line all that up. The center line of this needs to be the same center line as this. Okay, so you'll have to determine that where it's going to fall in your frame. That's very important. Uh, you know, what some guys will do is they'll put a little bit of something on here so that when it touches the frame, it starts to mark it. Or even better, on the frame itself, because you'll chisel or you'll, mort you'll uh, route or mortise that away so that this will make contact. However you go about doing it is fine. Um, that information really ought to be on the template. And it is om an omission that it's not on there. Uh, hopefully in a future sort of reference, forgive me. <laughs> Let's start over. It's all right here. I was browbeating Trimco for the last five minutes. So on page one of the instructions, you probably noticed that and are screaming at the video. Uh, inch and three eight, uh, inch and three sixteenth center line difference between the center line of the latch to the center line of the stripe. Forgive me. Okay. That perfectly solves it. You still don't know the height of the dust box, but you can easily measure that. And that really brings all that to conclusion. Um, it's a very well-made item. It is a very common and popular item that we sell all the time because it's unique. Um, in Trimco, you know, the quality of their fit and finish is always excellent. I mean, the satin nickel color on here, and the only th thing you're seeing here is just, you know, probably marks from my hand touching the backside with the grease on it uh, for a smooth operation. It's just great fit and finish every single time from Trimco. Sometimes their products take a little longer to get, but it's always well worth the wait. That that is that is a that is for sure. A um, couple of dimensions omitted on the template is an easy thing to look over or look past when you get this piece of hardware and you're just instantly impressed with the quality of the fit and finish. Someone cares over there, and it's probably more than one person because the stuff lo always looks great. Any questions on the Trimco 1069L and a 619 satin nickel finish, or any other Trimco product? Please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you.